good morning and thanks for choosing Fox 10 News on this Sunday morning, August 8th. Happy Sunday. I am Gianni Navarro. Let's first check in with meteorologist Jennifer Lambers. Matt Barentine has this morning off as well. And Jennifer, yesterday was absolutely beautiful, but I know we're continuing to keep a close eye on the tropics. Yeah, that's exactly right, Gianni. And a brand new update just coming out from the National Hurricane Center, too. We've been monitoring three different areas. Now it's just really turning into two areas, but however, those chances are rising for those two. So starting off on the furthest side, 0% chance for that formation for that little area of a disturbance to develop over the next five days. So we're going to go ahead. Let's not really monitor it. Those chances have dropped tremendously. Now these first two chances bumping up to moderate. So 40% over the next five days, and it is looking likely for not only one, but both of these to turn into a tropical depression heading further on into next week and also for tomorrow or just by midweek. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on both of these as they do enter into those favorable conditions and approach closer towards the Caribbean. Going to be interacting with some of the land masses there and just see how they do develop. But also I want to remind folks, please be careful what you see on social media. Be careful what you share and don't buy into the social media hype. The track and also strength and intensity with these far too early to be talking about. We're just monitoring at this point, but we'll continue to keep you updated here along Fox 10 News again. Just make sure you are getting that information from meteorologists. But for the 2021 hurricane names so far, what we're seeing for the season is five named storms. They're calling for that above average season. About 15 to 21 named storms is that forecast from the National Hurricane Center. We've already seen five, and so those next names, in case these do get up to that tropical storm strength, would be Fred and would be Grace. Now we're going to keep a close eye on the tropics, keep you updated, but also we're going to talk more about your Sunday forecast and your week ahead of all of those details coming up soon. Gianni. Jennifer, thank you. We're following some breaking news this morning. Hall of Fame college football coach Bobby Bowden has died at 91 years old. Coach Bowden won more than 350 games and two national championships at Florida State. Bowden's son confirmed that his father died at home, surrounded by his family and friends this morning. Florida State also announcing the news on social media. Last month, Bobby Bowden announced he had a terminal illness. This is developing and we will bring you more updates as we get them. Also in the news this morning, the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic so far from over. According to health officials, although more people are getting vaccinated, there are still major concerns about the Delta variant, especially as students are returning to school. John Lorink has more. A landmark moment for the United States as 50% of the population is now fully vaccinated. However, the virus is still posing a threat. We thought that this was getting better and now we're working as hard, even harder than we did a few months ago. The U.S. is averaging more than 107,000 new cases per day, the highest it's been in six months based on data from Johns Hopkins University. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's latest ensemble forecast predicts a rise in COVID-19 deaths and hospitalizations over the next four weeks. CDC data shows that as of Tuesday, an average of 192 children under 17 were admitted to U.S. hospitals every day over the previous week. Being a teenager is such an important time in all of our lives, and we've already lost a chunk of that time. And to make sure that we don't lose any more time and you know, for the help of society and for the help of other people as well to go get vaccinated. That's why I got vaccinated. In TikTok influencers vaccinated. now campaigning to get young people vaccinated as some Americans now sick with COVID-19 say they regret not getting their shots. I'm so sorry that I made the mistake to be negligent and not get vaccinated. Vaccinations are so important. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Like it or not, students and teachers will be required to mask up when school starts this coming Wednesday. The decision had many parents leaving school board meetings frustrated after not being able to be heard. The Common Sense campaign taking a deeper dive into the discussion at a town hall uh, over breakfast yesterday morning. The mask, uh, I, I am absolutely against being mandated. I think that's a personal choice. If my doctor told me to wear it, I would. I, I'm 77 years of age. I've never had to wear a mask for anything. And people die from the flu. People die from other viruses. But we don't mask up. 
Both Baldwin County and Mobile County schools have put mask mandates in place for students, teachers and staff when school starts this coming Wednesday. Meanwhile, both school systems say there is a process to speak publicly at a regular meeting. The next regular meeting for Baldwin County is August 19th for Mobile County. That will be August 23rd. A reminder in Mobile County, students in pre-K, kindergarten and first grade, that's ages seven and under, are strongly encouraged but not required to wear masks. And take a look at the school systems and universities now requiring masks on campus for all students, faculty and staff. You can see quite a few taking action with the new school year set to begin. Meanwhile, Faith Academy is delaying the first day of class by three weeks in a last minute move Friday. Faith Academy leaders sent a letter to parents announcing a delay to the start of the school due to the spike in COVID-19 cases, saying, quote, the Delta variant is affecting the pediatric population of Mobile in an unprecedented manner. Our faith family has been greatly impacted from students to teachers to office personnel. End quote. Students will now go back Tuesday, August 31st and meet the teachers will be August 30th. In Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis signing an executive order last week preventing schools from issuing mask mandates, but several school districts defying the order. Now they could potentially risk losing school funding. The state's Board of Education issuing emergency rules to protect what they say is a parent's freedom to choose what is best for their children. With the new proposal, parents of kindergarten through 12th grade students in Florida can use the HOPE scholarship to transfer to another public school without a mandate or enroll in an approved private school. A pediatrician is advising parents on how to tell the difference between coronavirus and common cold symptoms. While the coronavirus and regular colds do share some similarities uh, on symptoms and both are viruses, Dr. Ben Hoffman, a pediatrician at Oregon Health and Science University, says parents should look for some signs kids may have just a cold. Hoffman says if kids are too sleepy, aren't eating or drinking or have a high fever, it may be time to check in with your child doctor. Hoffman recommends certain care levels for colds and kids can likely stay home, but be prepared to get your child tested for the coronavirus. Things like ibuprofen or Tylenol, if they're appropriate, you know, at the right dose for, for uh, a kid can, can really help uh, decrease those symptoms, making sure that kids are getting rest and just then keeping an eye on them. Um, you know, I do think it, at this point in time, if parents have concern that their child might have an infection, the, the biggest reason to get them tested is to, is to think about quarantining them or protecting, you know, the rest of the family. As children return to school, the CDC is recommending children, teachers, school staff and visitors wear masks indoors, regardless of vaccination status. A vaccine mandate could soon be coming to our military men and women. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin looking into invoke this as a way to ensure safety for soldiers. But the potential move may face a lot of pushback. The defense secretary is expected to ask President Biden to require the entire military be vaccinated. Right now, only FDA approved vaccines can be enforced. However, a special waiver from the commander in chief would allow a vaccine under emergency use authorization like the three in the United States to be non optional. According to the DOD, 64% of active duty troops are fully vaccinated. Slightly more have had at least one dose. Whether mandated or not, uh, we want to encourage our airmen uh, to be vaccinated, not just for COVID, but everything else. Officials say they are in a race against time with the Delta and the new Lambda variant among the unvaccinated to keep the military mission ready. Fox 10 is committed to making sure you're ready to vote in the upcoming municipal election. The first day of in-person absentee voting already taking place. When it comes to voting absentee, there are several qualifications, according to Mobile City Clerk and Chief Election Official Lisa Lambert. Expect to be out of the city or the country or the county on election day. You have a disability that prevents you from going to the polls. Uh, you have a disability and you're uh, over the age of 65. Uh, you are a student uh, enrolled in a um, college uh, out of the city, out of the county and out of the state. 
While absentee voting helps to skip lines, COVID-19 and the recent surge of the Delta variant also being major factors, voter Shirley Leatherwood Wilson says she's voting absentee because of an illness and for COVID safety. They are lying. I won't be able to stand it. And would you say it's also safer for you because of COVID-19? Yes, very much so. Local coordinator of Black Voters Matter, Jeanette, Jeanetta Witt Mitchell, has helped bring bus fulls of people to vote in person absentee in the past, saying this time around she hasn't been as successful. The organization would have 30 buses picking people up from local churches and bringing them to the election office. Now many refusing to get on the bus out of fear for COVID-19. And remember, the deadline to apply for an absentee ballot is August 17th. We have more information on absentee voting on our website, FoxNTV.com. The Senate has voted to advance a $1 trillion infrastructure package, which would be the country's biggest investment in years in its roads, bridges, airports, and waterways. But even as that bill is under discussion, a much larger proposal uh, by President Biden, which carries a price tag of $3.5 trillion, promises to set off an even more intense round of debate. Fox News congressional correspondent Chad Pergram has the latest. Democrats aim to go it alone, writing a massive $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, and Republicans are ready to pounce. Senate Budget Committee Chairman Bernie Sanders is drafting the framework for that measure. The size and the scope of Chairman Sanders' socialist shopping list will make every disagreement we've had in landing the infrastructure compromise look like a rounding error. Nothing less than Chairman Sanders' dream shopping list. Every American family will know exactly where their senator stands. Big internal fights loom for Democrats with this bill. Liberals hope to stuff into that package a pathway to citizenship for DACA recipients and climate change provisions. The GOP says some of the Democrats' priorities have nothing to do with girders, bridges, and concrete. Some Republicans deliberately slowed down the bipartisan bill to stall Democrats from starting on their own infrastructure bill. There's absolutely no reason for rushing this process and attempting to limit scrutiny of this bill other than the Democrats' completely artificial, self-imposed, and politically driven timeline. We can get this done the easy way or the hard way. It's in either case, the Senate will stay in session until we finish our work. It's up to my Republican colleagues how long it takes. But finishing the infrastructure bills is a long way off. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi won't commit to recalling the House during the August recess until the Senate deals with both infrastructure bills. Let's see what happens. But I did say that we're, we're going to do this when we can do it all. Finishing the bills is weeks, if not months, away. All 50 Senate Democrats must stick together to thread the needle and avoid a filibuster on the second bill. And House Democrats can only lose three of their own before needing help from the other side. There's a running joke in Washington that every week is infrastructure week, but not quite yet. The difficulty of passing these bills is precisely why Congress hasn't approved an infrastructure bill in years. On Capitol Hill, Chad Pergram, Fox News.